Uh, today we're going to talk about logging. So first of all I'll connect to the MAPECU3 that I've got uh, connected via a USB port on this computer. Press the connect key. Now in this case we've actually got a base table loaded in the MAPECU uh, in the MAPCAL now. So it's asking us do you want to update the MAPECU from the table in MAPCAL or press no to load from the MAPECU3 or cancel. I'm going to select no <coughs> which will load the current data in the MAPECU3 into MAPCAL. And you'll see in the status box it's reading all the tables from the MAPECU3 and uh, it will be completed when it's finished reading the primary field. So we're there. Now you'll notice that we've actually got an error message here, uh, Igniter error. That's because the secondary set of tables is not actually configured correctly um, for this test system. If I switch to the primary set, it'll be configured correctly. If you ever see the Igniter error message appear, go into ECU configuration and check that the Igniter configuration is set correctly. Now I know I'm running at an 8 channel, 8 cylinder coil on plug, so I'll change it to 8 cylinder coil on plug press the OK key and that should resolve the igniter error. So in this case I'll switch back to primary using the P key but um, that was uh, an example of igniter error. And the interesting thing is if it, you do have an igniter error message it will actually prevent ignition timing adjustments so just be aware of, of that. Now logging uh, can be started and stopped through the function keys function 1, function 2 um, in this case we are running on a different style computer so I'll have to do it manually if I start logging or simulating you'll see that the time is logged at the bottom and I'll just exercise the dials to get some data uh, that's actually stored in the log you can do six runs of logs and uh, switch between them so what I'll do now is stop logging and I'll actually do another another log so I can show you switching between the two I'll start logging again so this won't actually override uh, any of the logs or any of the the ones I just took I'll um, vary the TPS vary the RPM so I'll just log some different kind of data this time compared to what I did the last time and that should do so I'll stop logging okay if I press function 8 or the tab for logging I'll be presented with the current logs I can use the cursor I can use the mouse to position the cursor or I can use the keys to move the cursor backwards and forwards uh, to drill into the data you just press the up arrow down arrow and you'll notice that all the waypoints at the bottom of the screen are being updated as we move the cursor the other um, screens are accessed with the page up page down so I have to access those differently um, because I'm not running a standard uh, keyboard here but um, as you can see you can go through and look at all the data you'll see the time interval here if there was any injector what the temperature is if there's any ignition timing adjustment which in this case there's not uh, pressure RPM and so forth so I can drill in and get a better get better resolution of the data drill out again and also what's sometimes more important is the fuel zones and, and timing zones that are actually being used at this time. You'll notice those change as I go through the data. The other thing that's interesting or important for logging is the configure logging screen. So in configure logging you can select the number of samples per second we generally do 10 samples per second for maximum resolution you can configure O2 as voltage or air fuel ratios in this case it's ground it's 
uh, greyed out. Uh, it's probably because I've got the O2 set up uh, not configured for AFRs. You can enable auto logging as well, which means it'll start logging in this case at 1000 RPM and then stop logging at 7900. So this could be useful for a dyno run or a, so it's hands free. And you can also turn on grid lines. If I turn on grid lines, you'll see that we've got some lines on the log now. Uh, it can get a little busy, so in this case we've got them turned off. The other thing you can do is change the scales. Now we've got this map ECU set to a maximum of 6000 RPM, so what I can do is change the max scale so I'm not wasting headroom to 6000. And now you'll see RPM is taking up the whole graph space rather than only partial. The other thing you can do in logging is to change colours. So at the moment I've got red assigned to RPM, I can turn it off completely, uh, which is useful if you're not using data because it slows down processing, but um, I can change it to any one of these colours, uh, perhaps a nice shade of pink, and then you'll see RPM now is in pink. So uh, you can configure any colour scheme that you like. Obviously it's not a good idea to use the same colour for all the traces, but um, Anything that's not being used, I recommend that you turn off um, just simply because it uh, declutters. And you can set maximum and minimum for any of the parameters on logging. So essentially that's logging, very simple, um, but very powerful for reviewing lean spots and um, so forth.